The Metropolitan Police has handed out hundreds of fixed penalty notices this week as part of its operation to make London's roads safer. The initiative comes after six cyclists were killed in a fortnight earlier this month. 1,392 motorists have already been penalised and 750 cyclists. Well, let's cross now to Mark Ashdown, who's outside Transport for London's headquarters, where a vigil is being held. And uh, campaigners want more investment for cycle safety, Mark. That's right, Riz. This uh, vigil is still going on, but about 20 minutes ago, there was a sea of bodies around here, right outside Transport for London headquarters, as cyclists stay to mass die-in to bring their message that they feel not enough is being done. Now, this is a hugely emotive issue. All are aware of the problem. The question now is, can they find a solution? Rush hour brought to a standstill by a thousand bodies with one simple message, no more deaths on London's roads. You're constantly having to, to basically protect your life and that we shouldn't have to do that. Proper investment and um, you know, an understanding between everyone, car drivers, lorry drivers, um, ourselves as cyclists, um, pedestrians for us all to take responsibility for, for that change to happen. After six deaths in a few weeks, there was another cyclist seriously injured today, again involving a lorry. One thing cyclists want is more consideration in the planning phase. This is set to be one of London's largest developments. There already appears to be brand new pavements in place. It's the ideal opportunity, they say, to help provide more to keep them safe. Donica McCarthy organised today's direct action. He maintains TfL and individual boroughs should ring fence money specifically to improve cycle safety. We want a real budget. At the moment we're getting crumbs. So we want 10% of the transport budgets at London and borough level to be devoted to protecting ro vulnerable road users. Secondly, we want an integrated cycling network in London within five years. And thirdly, we want to say at the top table. TfL board is made up of business people, the vested interests. There's no vested in, there's no representation for pedestrians, cyclists, the real people of London. We want two places on the board of, of um, TfL. Mass die-ins were staged in Holland in the 70s, prompting a cycling revolution. Councils say they're willing to cooperate, but changes need to be London-wide. If we are going to follow a Dutch-style approach, it will mean redefining and replanning how traffic moves around our capital in a way that we haven't really looked at before. That needs strategic overview, that needs the mayor to bring councils together. That's what he needs to do, he needs to do it soon. Cyclists say they would like a, a seat at that table, do you think they should? Absolutely, they should be there, of course they should be there because you know, they have the knowledge day in, day out, they're experiencing the problems and challenges of getting across London. Transport for London says it's spending £1 billion in upgrades, overhauling junctions, segregating major roads to help protect cyclists. Safety, they say, is their top priority. Now they have to convince this lot. Well, the vigil's starting to break up now. They're going to reopen the road. Uh, we could talk to a couple of people who've been personally affected by uh, safety, uh, Nazam and Tom. Let's come to you first, Tom. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell us what happened to you. Uh, four years ago in December, I was struck well, I was on the pavement uh, by a bendy bus um, and I was obviously nearly dead. I was thrown into a coma, my, leg, my lungs popped and I was in a coma over Christmas and New Year's. You were a pedestrian, so I mean, it just highlights that safety is an issue for everyone on the road. Absolutely. I mean, the point is, especially on Oxford Street, which is Europe's busiest shopping street, which is the highest rate of collisions of any street in London. Uh, let's bring in Nazam. Now, I, I know it's a personal tragedy, if you, if you would just tell, tell us what happened with your, with your daughter. My daughter Hope, uh, she was only 13 when uh, two years, exactly two years and um, two months ago, on her way back from school, uh, she attempted to cross the road at a puffin crossing where an HEV driver uh, just literally drove over her and her push bike. Hope was unfortunately trapped for 20 minutes, uh, all the emergency services excuse me, emergency services were uh, there quickly. It took 20 minutes to uh, cut her free from the lorry. No, no, I mean, she tragically died after, she, you're, you're, you're supporting was, this now. She was pronounced dead on the scene, yes. And uh, looking into the uh, incident, I've realized that there were many things that could have prevented this unfortunate. Now you spoke a moment ago, what, what do you think needs to happen now on the, on the roads? 
There needs to be a reg a regulation on lorries, lorry access to busy urban areas. Um, th it should be made compulsory that they have safety equipment fitted because one of those equipment that will cost around 500 pounds would have saved my daughter's life. And you know, um, nobody should lose a child. It's okay. the biggest tragedy to him. You know. uh, and Tom, just just finally, just to bring you back, and you, uh, sure. you're obviously supporting. This. You feel more could be done. Absolutely. I mean, I'm supporting the pedestrianisation of Oxford Street, which is Europe's busiest shopping street, and has a very high collision rate. And uh, this involves TfL buses. TfL buses have been involved in 2,000 collisions uh, that have resulted in serious uh, injury in the last five years. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Now. All sides agree that, that, that more needs to be done. One thing that keeps coming up is a summit. Everybody wants the mayor to get involved and hold a summit with a seat for everyone around the table. And this can only increase the pressure on, on that happening. Riz. Mark, thanks very much.